G'day guys, welcome back to the Drew Footy YouTube channel for the 2023 edition of Just The Tips. We're back baby, uh, my weekly tips video will be a regular thing in 2023, um, so make sure you firstly have subscribed to the YouTube channel, and secondly, if you want to join along with all the footy tipping fun, uh, we have the link in the description of this video to join the league, and we also have the invite code for the Fantasy League as well. A few people have been asking, are we doing footy tipping, are we doing fantasy? Yes, it's all kicking off, so make sure you are involved this year. Today is the day I get my wisdom teeth out, guys. Uh, so at about 3.15, I'm going under and uh, getting all four wisdom teeth pulled out. So I won't be present on the channel. I'm recording this a little bit early, so hopefully you'll be able to bear with me on that particular issue. But as it currently stands, I am fasting. I haven't been able to eat since 7 a.m. or drink any water. And uh, I'm very hangry. It's only been like three hours, but I've been active at the gym, so my appetite is massive. My body is screaming for calories and water, to be honest. I am miserable right now. I am questioning all of my life choices. Um, but let's get into some predictions. Today's version of Just the Tips is sponsored by Manscaped.com, guys. If you want 20% off and free shipping on all of their great male grooming products, the body hair shaver, and also their liquid formulations as well, various accessories, 20% off on anything you get using the code TRUEFOOTY20, and you also get free shipping as well. So make sure you go to Manscaped.com and enjoy that discount. I'm gonna to have to whip through this video fairly quickly because um, I'm a wuss and I cannot possibly get through this whole video and then get through another six hours of not drinking water, but let's do this. A couple things to shout out first though, I did go on the Blue Abroad channel, they kindly featured me. Uh, I did about an hour long interview with Terry from Blue Abroad, so um, go check out their channel if you haven't already. I have done my ladder prediction for the year guys on a previous video, so go check that out if you're interested in seeing how I map out this entire season, or at least try to. And then Busher and I have done a podcast together as well, previewing the upcoming season. So all the content based on all the preview stuff is out there. Today we're looking at just round one. So we're back on Squiggle as you can see, and uh, up the top right here, you can follow along with a ladder and uh, it will map out what the ladder looks like at the end of round one if I get all my predictions right. So we're gonna start off with Richmond and Carlton at the MCG. Now, this is a tricky one. I have got Carlton in my top four this year, so t I'm tempted to give them a win early to sort of justify that prediction, but they are gonna be without Sam Walsh, at least in round one. Uh, and a, probably a smattering of other injuries. I'm not 100% sure. Obviously, the, I don't have access to the teams yet, but we know Walsh is out, so they're a little bit weakened. And Richmond looked up and down this preseason. They were a side that finished sixth last year, bolstered by Taranto and Hopper. This is, a, this is a juicy round one game, or at least opening game of the season this year between two sides that I expect will play finals this year. I don't really know who to predict. I think I'm going to give the early one to Richmond and back in Carlton to come over that line maybe in the second game against them later in the year and maybe finish the year strong. But I'm going to say the Tigers win this narrowly by 17 points, even though I think Carlton will finish higher this year. Then we've got Geelong and Collingwood who met in the qualifying final last year and Geelong beat them narrowly twice last year, at least twice from memory, it might have been three, but they beat them in the finals and they beat them earlier in the season when they were like six goals down at one point as well. So they're the reigning premiers, obviously, probably coming into this game as favorites. Um, they've no Joel Selwood in this game, obviously, but Jack Bowes, I'd imagine, will be playing, and Tanner Brun will be an interesting one to see if he cracks a game going into this game. But we know how good Geelong are, and Collingwood have brought in a couple of reinforcements. Dan McStay is now their mainstay key forward. Tom Mitchell comes into this side, so they've definitely gotten stronger in that sense. That being said, I still think Geelong will show up in round one and probably just account for them. I don't think, I think it'll be a close game. So I'll say Geelong win this one by eight points. We'll go with Thriller. Cool, now we've got Richmond and Carlton out of the way. We've got Geelong and Collingwood out of the way. This is the real blockbuster I think everyone wants to see. 17th versus 18th on last year's ladder. Two absolute, absolute titans clashing this uh, in round one. What a juicy prospect this is. Um, in all seriousness, I think this is an important game for West Coast to win and not to win early, just to um, kind of establish that they're not as bad as last year. And I think there's some pride at stake. And, and both of these sides will be looking at this game thinking there is four points gone begging here if we don't win it. I mean, obviously in a literal sense, yes, but North will look at West Coast as a very beatable side and they want to obviously climb up the ladder this year. And West Coast, conversely, will also see this as a very, very gettable game. And therefore, I think there's going to be 
a massive importance placed on this game. So with all that said, I, I still think West Coast will have the better best 22. And I know that I'm copying heat in my predictions for that, especially after the second JLT game was so poor. I do think Nick Nat is a big in or out. If he plays, then I'm very comfortable with a win. If he doesn't play, then I am less confident. And to be honest with you, I don't really know what to expect from North Melbourne. They were diabolical last year, so were West Coast. I think that we've got more reason to improve going into this year in the short term. North Melbourne have the Clarkson factor, so I don't know what kind of North will show up. So if a good North shows up, they could easily beat us. But I'm still gonna on balance tip my boys to win this game by 20 points. Then you've got Port and the Lions, and this will be a genuinely good game. Again, two sides that I predicted to make my top eight. Port I had eighth, and Brisbane I had third. And uh, This is a very tough game to pick because you've got Port with the home ground advantage, the less fancied side. Brisbane's best 22 looking incredibly strong, uh, in particular with Gunston coming in, and Dunkley, the more obvious one, but Gunston as well adds a different dynamic to that forward line. But I have this feeling about Port Adelaide. And this one, I think the inferior side will win. I think Port Adelaide have a good best 22. I think they were pretty average in the preseason games, as we saw. However, I just think they might come out and be that team that has a poor preseason and wins round one. It does happen quite a lot. So I'm, I'm a fan of what Port Adelaide can produce. And I think they're going to win this game as an upset by 24 points. Then we've got the 2021 Grand Final replay. Uh, in round one, they've obviously played in round one last year as well. Melbourne looked red hot in the preseason. They uh, they torched St Kilda and then they torched the Richmond side that we expect to be pretty good this year as well. I think they're the far stronger side coming into this game. The Bulldogs have lost Dunkley, they've added Lobb, they've added Jones and uh, structurally a little bit more sound, but I don't know if they I don't know if they justify any any confidence that they're going to come out and beat Melbourne in round one, who look very good. And of course, Melbourne have also strengthened with Lockie Hunter as a sort of, uh, I don't know what ranking he'd have in their midfield, like fourth or fifth. Um, but he's come out and had a pretty good preseason with them so far. So I'm pretty confident Melbourne should win this game. But by the, the nature of the dogs is that they will shock you when you least expect it. And I will say, I'll say Melbourne win. Uh, and I'll give, them, I'll give them a 31 point win. I'll say that they start this year really well with a good win. Gold Coast versus Sydney. This is a tough one because Gold Coast have a knack for beating the Swans. I think they've beaten them in Sydney and I think they beat them at Metricon last year as well. So they match up well against the Swans. Um, but that being said, I think the Swans will look at this game with the full knowledge that Gold Coast have shocked them a couple of times over the last couple of years and uh, will not take them lightly. I think there's a lot of potential for another upset, upset here and I think it would be one that's pivotal to Gold Coast finals hopes. You know, this is... This is a game that if they want to make the finals, they probably do need to win. They need to start beating some good teams at home. As I say this, I'm not confident who's going to win this game. We know Sydney is a great side. They did get belted in the grand final. I don't have full confidence that they'll win. Logically, they should. Because I've already gone a couple of roughies or, or uh, upset tips in this round so far, it makes me less inclined to pick another upset, which is a bad way of looking at it. But I will say... I'll say the Swans get the job done, but I'll say it's a thriller. I'll say they win by seven points. GWS versus Adelaide, this is a good one. This is two sides that were relatively average. Uh, Adelaide were better than GWS last year, but GWS did roll them. I think they smashed them um, at some point in the middle part of the year. I can't remember exactly when. And I, can't, I remember a couple of years ago as well, GWS were not going so well and then they belted Adelaide. So I, I like to look at the head-to-head -head and I tend to think that if a side matches up well against another side, that regardless of momentum and ladder position, they might do it again. That's what that's the way I'm inclined to think. So I think even though Adelaide looked really good in the preseason, GWS also had a really good second, uh, well, they only played one uh, game against another club this, this preseason. Despite the fact that I think Adelaide have the potential to potentially play finals this year, and I'd feel less strongly about GWS's chances to play finals, I think Adelaide will be better this year, but I think the home side gets the job done here. So I'm going to go with another upset here and say GWS win this game by four goals. Adelaide fans are going to hate me for that. I already think I dogged them in the ladder prediction and they're going to hate the fact that I've tipped GWS against them, but it's more out of respect for the fact that GWS might not be as bad as we expect this year, but I, th I think Adelaide would be better. 
but GWS to win that game. Hawthorne versus Essendon. Now, this is a tough game. I think I had both of these teams in my bottom four. Uh, in my latter prediction, I had Hawthorne winning the spoon, but Hawthorne are very, very capable of beating some teams when you least expect it. And I think a rivalry match like this um, with Essendon having a new coach, Brad Scott, they're a little bit of an unknown quantity and I don't have a lot of confidence in them yet, but that is not because they don't deserve it. We just haven't seen what this, this evolution of Essendon is under Brad Scott. I still think Hawthorne is my logical team to win the spoon but I also think that they will come out and surprise Essendon in round one and then maybe have a losing streak after that. So I think S I think Hawthorne rather will win this game by 14 points. I actually think it'll be a surprisingly good game for two teams that I think will be bottom four this year. Now it looks like we're in our final game of round one, guys. St Kilda versus Fremantle. Ross Lyon against the uh, his former club. And this is at Marvel with both uh, West Australian sides away for this game because I think the Ed Sheeran concert or something like that. This one is, it's not tricky, but St Kilda again is another unknown quantity. They started the year last year eight and three and missed the finals, um, which is a pretty poor result. And I do think Ross Lyon is the coach to get these guys on the straight and narrow and improve them. But I don't think, I believe that they're good enough to beat Fremantle in round one. I think Fremantle will still be a good side this year. I did have them outside my eight, but that was more just bad luck because there's a lot of good teams vying for the eight, at least in my in my mind. That's how I'm picturing the landscape this year. It'll be competitive. But that being said, I think Fremantle at Marvel will still be too difficult for them. The midfield that they've got, it's just fantastic. Their back line is really strong as well. They need to find a way to kick goals, but Nat Fife is looking like he's in really good form too. So I'm, I'm a lot more confident about Fremantle at this stage than I am about St Kilda. St Kilda's two preseason games, it was a mixed bag. They got annihilated by Melbourne and uh, then they beat Essendon and kept Essendon to four goals eight, but we don't know what Essendon's going to be like this year either. So I'm going to go with a safer bet. I'll say Fremantle win this game by 25 points. So there you have it, guys. That is the latter after my round one predictions. Again, there's only so much to read into that. Melbourne, Fremantle, and GWS is a surprising top three, to be honest. And the Bulldogs sitting in last position as well is quite interesting. But I had Melbourne as the biggest victors in round one, so that kind of makes sense. West Coast in fifth. That's what I like to see. Uh, I don't think we will stay there for very long. But there you go. Anyway, guys, I know that I kind of raced through that and I feel like I'm all over that place in that video. I hope I'm making sense. I'm very, very hungry and thirsty and I've got to go drive somewhere to pay for my wisdom teeth now and then drive home and then dad's taking me to get my teeth out. This is the best day. I can't wait. Anyway, guys, thank you for all your support uh, in the the first you know month or two of, of making videos. Um, it's been it's really good fun, and I can't wait for the actual action to take place. We do intend we'll probably do some live streams for round one. I'm hopeful. I think it lines up with my work roster, and I'm very very excited. So thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video. And hopefully the swelling in my face isn't so bad that I'll be able to get out a coherent sentence. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.